In this video, I'm going to share with you how to make a time shift video using Insta360 Studio, just like this. So to edit a time shift video in Insta360 Studio, the first thing you need to do is import your INSV files into Insta360 Studio. So to do this, just select all your INSV files and drag it into Insta360 Studio. And it's imported over here. You can click and drag the preview window to look around. And there are two tabs at the top of Insta360 Studio, the View tab and the Free Capture tab. The View tab is for exporting immersive 360 videos and the Free Capture tab is for editing reframed 360 video. So since we're making a time shift video, we need to be in the Free Capture tab. Now over here, there are a set of new buttons. So we've got Mark as Keyframe and Keyframe is just the same as Pivot Points in the app. We've got Delete Selected Keyframe. We have the Time Shift button which allows you to add speed so you can slow down your footage or speed it up. And you've got the trim buttons over here so you can trim the start and end of your video to get rid of the bits where you're setting up the camera. So if you remember from my previous time shift tutorials, I said there are three steps to making a time shift video. The first step is to trim your footage. The second step is to add the keyframes. And the third step is to add speed. So let's go through each step one at a time. So step number one is to trim your footage. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my video and go forward to the point when I start walking and trim the video here as my start point. And then I'll go to the end of the video to my end point just before I pack the camera away about here and make this my end point by dragging it inwards. So that's step one complete. Let's move on to step two, which is to add keyframes. So I'm going to go to the beginning of my video and I need to tell Insta360 Studio that this view should be the beginning of my video. So I'm going to add a keyframe over here and these parameters can be used to change the view over here. Now, if I move it up, you can see that the tilt is changing. So you can either click and drag the screen over here or you can change the parameters here to change the view. Right now you can see there's a lot of distortion going on. So I'm going to click the natural view and this will stretch things out to make it straighter. So now Insta360 Studio knows that at the beginning of the video, because there's a keyframe there, this is the view that I want to show the viewer. So now we need to go through the entire video to tell Insta360 Studio, this is what I want the viewer to see throughout the entire video. I'm going to scrub forward until this corner, which I need to turn. And if you remember from my previous time shift tutorials, I've said that you never add keyframes on a corner, but you always add it before and after a corner. So it's a smoother transition. So I want to get as close to this corner as possible. And I'm holding the right arrow key down and this will move one frame forward at a time. So you can make more precise movements. And I'll add a keyframe over here. And then I'll scrub forward past this corner until here and add a keyframe to look at the Abbey. And I'm going to go forward up until here to look at the Abbey. And at this point over here, some birds come into play, which I want to see. So I'm going to add a keyframe over here and you'll see when I press play, they fly by. And as they fly by, I'm going to go back by using the left arrow key. I want to reframe and see them go by. So I'm going to turn this around to this view, add a keyframe over here, and then maintain this view as they go by, add a keyframe over here. And now that they've finished going by, I can just look back at the path again and add a keyframe over here. So if I play this back, 
So we're looking at the Abbey, the birds come, they fly past, and now it's looking at the path, and now we carry on keyframing. So I'm going to go forward up until here, press the right arrow key to go as close to this corner as possible, make it straight, add a keyframe, and then press the right arrow key until I turn the corner, which is about here. And I'll reframe to look at the path, the direction I'm walking in, and add a keyframe over here. Let's scrub forward till the next corner, which is almost here. So I'll just use the right arrow key until I get close enough, which is here. Add a keyframe, scrub forward past this corner, use the right arrow key to be more precise. Now that I've gone past the corner, I'll reframe in the right direction, add a keyframe, scrub forward till the next corner, which is over here. I'm gonna turn left, so I'll get as close to that turn as possible, which is here. Add a keyframe before the corner, let's turn the corner, and then add a keyframe after the corner in the new direction I am walking in. So let's continue straight. This is all straight up until here, so I'm gonna position this straight and then add a keyframe over here and then scroll forward. It's quite a turn here, so I'm just gonna precisely go just before that moment where that narrow passage is and reframe here and add a keyframe. And then I'll scrub forward past this corner, reframe in the new direction and add a keyframe here. And scroll forward just before I turn this corner, which is over here. So I'll go back. About here, put this in the middle, add a keyframe here, scroll a bit forward, just wait until this corner is turned, which is here. Reframe the new direction, add a keyframe, and I'm going to scrub forward until the Abbey front over here which I want to see in more detail. So what I'm going to do is go a bit more back and start to center this face of the Abbey, which I want to show in detail, and add a keyframe here, and then scrub forward a bit, put this face in the center, and add a keyframe and I want to reframe to show this face of the Abbey because it looks really nice. I want to show the detail to the audience and the window. So I'm just gonna go forward here very carefully to make sure this is in shot. And now that we're going past it, I'm gonna reframe away from the face of that wall to this building over here. Add a key frame. And I'll add another one over here. And I'm gonna keep adding keyframes as we go towards and past it. So now we're going away from it. I'll just keep it in the center as we go away. And I could add the keyframes to look at the path, but because there's so many things to look at here, looking at points of interest is more interesting than just looking at a path. And now we're approaching the end of the video, which is over here. And I'm gonna zoom in, so I want to make a more specific keyframe. Now, I don't know why, 
The minus button is the zoom in button, which is wrong. So it needs to be swapped around. It must be a bug. And over here, I want to reframe to now look at the Abbey and at the end of the video, just to hold this position over here. And that's it. We've now reframed the entire video. So now Insta360 Studio knows what I want the viewers to see throughout the entire video. So the final step now is to add speed. So I'm gonna to go to the beginning of the video. And at the beginning of the video, I actually want it normal speed because I want the viewers to take in the gardens and the abbey so they kind of know where we are. Um, so I'm gonna scroll forward a little bit and I'm gonna zoom in to be a bit more precise. So the first two seconds I want normal speed and then I want to go into 16 times speed um, as I walk uh, through the gardens. Now on the app, when you scrub through the video like this, you can see where you are in the video, but on the desktop, you need to click to see what, where you are in the video, which makes it harder to know where you want the time shift to start and end. So before you click the time shift button, you need to know where you want to add the speed up until. So right now I know that I want the speed to be until when the birds fly over the camera. So I need to make a mental note, that's 34 seconds. So from the beginning of the video, I want two seconds of normal video and then I want to add speed up until 34 seconds. So I'm gonna click the time shift button where I want the speed to begin. And then if you just hover your cursor over the video, you'll see that there is a two times speed bar at the bottom. And if you just keep hovering and dragging your mouse over the video, it will get bigger so that it's going to stretch the speed over that portion of the video. And we wanted it at the 34 second mark, which is about here. So if you just click on the video, it will apply the two times speed to that part of the video and you'll see the video get shorter. And then just click on the speed, click on the drop down and select 16 times speed. And then you now have the hyperlapse speed but it won't preview in this video. You need to export it to see the final result. So now if I just go to this part, so this is where the 16 times speed ends and we see this in normal speed. And as soon as I go back to this part, I want the 16 times speed to begin again at 11 seconds. And I want the speed to continue until we reach the face of the abbey wall. So I'm going to zoom out, which is at this point. So that's when we can see the detail of the wall. So this will be in normal speed. So I have to go back to the 11th, 12th second after the birds have gone. Click the time shift button and stretch the speed all the way to two minutes, one second and click here to apply the speed and the video will shorten. So the speed has been applied. Click on the speed, select 16 times speed. And from this point on over here, we have normal speed. So now we can observe and take in the wall and the detail, which looks really nice. And then from this point, which is 26 seconds to about 43 seconds, that's when I want to add the speed again. So I'll go back to here, click the time shift button and apply the speed up until here click on the speed and select 16 times speed. So now I can zoom in because it's getting pretty small. So now we have normal speed at 24th second. 
So we can observe this for a few seconds, let's say two seconds, and then I want 16 times speed from 26 second all the way until just before the end, which is 38 seconds. So let's go to 26, click the time shift button, drag the speed over to 36. Now, if you don't, if you click the time shift button by accident and you want to get rid of it, you just need to wave the cursor away from the video and it will eventually go away. So I'm going to click the time shift button again to bring it up. And apply the speed up until here. Click on the speed, select 16 times speed. And now we've trimmed the video, we've added keyframes, and now we've added speed to the video, so our time shift is now complete. Your final step is now to export your video. So to do this, go to export, and here you can choose your resolution. So if you want it in 4K, you can put 3840, and it will automatically complete 2160. Now I shot this in H.265 on the 1R, so I'm going to select H.265 and it's automatically selected a bitrate of 200 megabits per second. And you can choose your file name and where you want to save it to and click OK and your video will begin exporting. So that's how you make a time shift video in Insta360 Studio. I know it's been a really long video, but I thought that if I talk you through the process, my thought process on how I go about making a time shift video, then it would be more useful to you. So let me know in the comments below, do you like this style when I talk you through the process, even though it's quite long, or do you prefer the shorter cut down version? Let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.